black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah, fuck with me. What is going on, you guys? Back with a mukbang today. Keeping it chill. Uh, having a little chicken burger action with the best chips mm, ever. Salt and vinegar, Lay's. Crispy, crunchy, delicious. Once I crack the bag, I can't stop. I'm one of those guys. I'm uh, going to tell you a little tale about the time I was almost lured and abducted uh, as a child. Not by aliens, by humans, of course, which is kind of even more messed up when you really think about it. I feel like aliens, it's like, it's expected. But like when your fellow human tries to like abduct you, it's not that chill. Let's start off by just analyzing. I'll just give you a little look-see at the food. And then I'll start chopping the story up uh, about me basically having an alternative life chained up as a hostage potentially for you know what I mean or killed so there's that so I got the two burgers here I did one buffalo if you can see like the redness on that so I did toss it in Frank's got some nice bun obviously lettuce tomato and loaded with ranch and then this one is just the plain chicken burger as is with extra mayo of course saucy guy lettuce tomato and of course quintessential chip. I thought long and hard about it. And I'm at the decision in my life where I know for certain I can say that salt and vinegar is the best chip. I used to juggle it between that all dressed Salt and vinegar is definitely the winner. All right, I'm feeling a little spicy. So I'm going in for that buffalo chicken immediately. I just squirted ranch all over myself. It is literally everywhere. Inside job, sneak peek, that's where the ranch squirt came from. So be it though, that squirt is flavor. Delicious. As you can see, these chicken burgers are the not obviously homemade edition. They are. The chicken burger that every high school provides. That round, reformed meat patty. I know for a fact every single cafeteria slings those burgers. There was no way that you went to high school and didn't eat one of these chicken burgers. Okay, so abduction story time. Um, when I was seven, no, no, sorry, six, uh, I was out at my cottage or camp or whatever you want to call it, lake house, I don't know. But we would stay out there for the summertime, a couple months. And so I was actually at my grandma's house this day. And just down the road was a playground, park, tennis court, basketball courts, all that stuff. I 
And from her house to there, it was like 300 meters, like not far. So I hop on my little BMX bike, ride over there to play with friends. And out here, like, everybody knows each other. It's all just a small, like, summer community. So it's like, you know, every, it has that safe feeling. Nobody's really worried about their six-year-old kid riding their bike down to the park to play. Anyways, do my playing, all that. I leave to go back to my grandma's. And this is like in the afternoon, broad daylight. And I'm biking, and I get up to this, like, three-way stop, and her house is, like, literally, I just have to, like, I'm here, I would have to cross the road and go down her driveway, and there's a three-way stop. And right as I got to that, like, three-way stop area, just before I could cross over, this truck, this, like, Midnight blue truck pulls up beside me. And there's two guys in it and they look very similar. They had mustaches, like longer hair, wearing like aviators, probably like thirties. They were very like banger looking. Rolls down the window, drops a chip. Rolls down the window, they like both lean over, and one guy like leans out and engages conversation with me. And I'm like six, and I'm like looking because he's like, you know what I mean? He's like up here. And the stereotypical thing that you would like that they say that like everybody says like candy from strangers, but he essentially offered me like candy to get in the car. In my head, I knew exactly what was going down. I've seen this episode of Unsolved Mysteries before. Like, I know what happens here. Like, I get abducted, you chain me up and shit, or murder me, or whatever. Like, I know how this goes. That six years old, I knew that. Because I guess shout out to my parents for letting me watch, like, sketchy shows like that. But it was the 90s. I feel like parents didn't care as much back then. <laughs> Anyways, so, like... I, like, disagree to climb and quickly, like, pedal in front of the, their vehicle and down my grandma's neighbor's driveway because it was actually closer to me. And I pedal in super fast because I was playing it cool up until... I was like alone and out of their sight because I knew it was sketchy. And then I was all like w weirded out and nervous. And uh, 
I just dropped my bike and ran and like hit up against my grandma's neighbor's shed and just like stood there for like five minutes. Just kind of freaked out. I'm like evaluating what had just happened. And I never told anybody about it, which was a weird thing. Like I just went into my grandma's house and like pretended like everything was cool and fine. Which is, I don't know why I didn't ever say anything. But I remember thinking to myself, like, I can't believe that that just happened to me. Like, I remember having the thought, like, oh, that's real? People actually do that? I thought was, this was just in movies. It's like, how messed up of a person are you that you would, like, rob someone of their life? Their one life, right? Like, you just, like, take advantage of, like, this kid? Rob them of their life. Probably end up having to kill them. all their parents and siblings, everybody else's life is fucked. Like, I don't get how people could do that. It's so crazy. The terrible things that some people can do. What happened? That girl, like Amanda Berry or whatever. She was captive like 20 years. Level the, like the level of guilt that would play on my brain. Like if I was like a lot of these people who do the shit lead very like normal seeming lives and like they'll be like, oh, we, we, we never expected that our neighbor would have be like had somebody chained up. But imagine going out, like you're going to work every day, and in the back of your mind, you're like, I have a person chained up in my house, and they've been there for 10 years, and they want desperately to get free. Like, how could you exist on a day-to-day -day basis, just knowing that. I guess to some people, that's the draw, though. It's like that power. It's like some crazy power thing, maybe. Clearly, these people are not right up in the up in the head. Well, that was a A-plus cafeteria meal. I quite enjoyed that. Of course, I hope you guys also enjoyed that one. Until the next one, eat good, live well, stay true.